Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this really interesting and professional timeline in Word. So let's open a new document. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to insert text box, draw text box, click and draw out a text box. Now obviously you'll know the different number of text boxes that you need for your timeline. So I'm just going to concentrate on six. So mine are going to be 624. This is up in your height in shape format. If you don't have shape format up there, it's because you haven't selected your shape. And then this one here will be 4.66. Press enter. And this will give me the shape that I want and the size that I want. So in here, I'm going to put some text. So I have just pasted this in. But what I've done is I've made sure that it's center aligned, not left aligned. In the top one here, you can see there's my font, my font size, and also it's bold here. And this text here is font size 10. And again, the same font. So what I want to do is to make sure that my text is perfectly aligned and it's also centered nicely in my square. So the way to customize this is to select it, go to shape format and go to format pane. And over here, you've got shape and text options. In the shape options, you've got this icon here, which is layout and properties. If I click on that, it gives you all your margins. This is really, really useful because some people like a big margin around their text and some people are happy for their text to reach almost the edge of their box. So if I go to the left margin and use the up arrow, you can see it's moving into the center. Again, with the right arrow, I can go to four. And then the top margin, I can move that text down using my margins. Now, I won't bother with the bottom one because you can simply move that just using this arrow here. So you can do as much as you, if you want to match it to the top, that's absolutely fine, but I just tend to use my arrow. So once that's selected, I'm also going to take the outline off this box. So select it, go to shape format, outline, no outline, and then deselect. Just going to zoom out, then select the box, copy and paste it. So you can either press command or control C, deselect, command or control V. And then you can do command or control V again and again. Or you can simply select the box, hold down the alter option key, click and drag. It doesn't matter. You can use any one of these methods. So now we want to make them all perfectly aligned. So the key is here is to not make so many, just make three. So then we're going to decide how far apart we want these boxes. Then I'm going to select them all, go to shape format, go to align, and select distribute vertically, then align and align to center. Then I'm going to go to group and select group. Then I'm going to copy and paste it and move it across. Now, because you don't want the boxes perfectly lined up because it's a timeline, then obviously you can move it so that they're slightly off center to each other. Now, if I group these all together, it's now one group. I can now center align it to the middle. But what I can now do is go to shape options, go to fill, then go to gradient fill. Now this was the last gradient colors I used, but I'm going to change them. So I'm going to select this color here. You can see it's got an orange outline. Go to color, select the color of your choice. I'm going to select a dark blue. Then this one here, I'm going to go to color again and select a lighter blue. Then I'm going to go to the home tab and I'm just going to change the font color to white and then deselect. Once I'm happy with the placement, I can now put in my arrows. Now it's a bit close to the top here. I need room for a title. So I'm just going to move them down using my arrow keys. So now go to insert shapes and then we're going to scroll down to the arrows. Now, of course, you can do this any way you like. It's up to you, but I'm just going to choose this arrow here click and draw out that arrow. Then I'm going to turn it round. And then this arrow, we want to center to this box here. You can do that by eye if you want to. And we can just pull it down so we can line it up with the top of the box. You can see it's got an outline. So once you've selected it, 
you can simply go to shape format and then we can go down to line and go to no line and then go to gradient fill. Now because you use this gradient before for the boxes it will immediately come up and you can keep that gradient if you want to or of course you can go back and change all the colours. We're on linear at the moment so you can change that as well and you can also change the direction, it's completely up to you. So now all I'm going to do is simply copy and paste it. I've just held down my Alt or Option key and then I'm going to zoom out because it will keep hopping around. Select this one, go to Shape Format, go to Rotate and then flip horizontally and then we can move it in line with this one here again using it to go to the middle. Then we can go to Send Backwards, Centre Back and it will send that arrow behind the top arrow. Deselect, check you're happy and then we can group these two together by selecting them both. Go to Shape Format, go to Group, select Group, then we can copy and paste it and then we can apply it to these two and then as we move down we've made an extra one, that's not a problem. Deselect, reselect the extra one and press Delete. So then what we can do is select them all, go to Shape Format, go to Align, Align to Centre, so now they're all perfectly lined up. Deselect, we can reselect this one, go to Group and select Ungroup, deselect them both, reselect this one and simply move this one up to join that top one. Again, Centre Backwards, Centre Back, and again with this one, centre back. And then this one here, we can ungroup. Pull this one up. And again, shape format, centre back. And again, centre back. Perfect. So now what you can do is you can go through and make sure they're perfectly lined up. You can once again group them together so that they don't move as a pair, or they move as a pair, sorry. Just use that align key with your arrow. Again, this one, there we go. Perfect. So once you're happy with that, we'll put a background in. So go to insert, shapes, click on the square, Click and draw out a huge rectangle to cover your entire page. And then back over to the Format Shape menu. Once again, we can go to Gradient. This time, we're going to go to Radial. And then in the direction, pick the center one. Then with the dark arrow, we're going to select white. And then with this one, we're going to select a light gray. We're just going to swap those around then you can move it left or right to your design preferences. Then again, centre backwards, centre back. And then finally the title. And then we, what we will do is we're just going to click on those boxes and just put a shadow on them. So go over to Shape Options again, but go to Effects, go to Shadow, click on the presets, and I'm going to put the top right shadow in. I'm going to take off the blur, I'm going to move the distance away to about 7.1. Then go to insert, go to shapes, again the square, click and draw out a rectangle. Then once again go over to the bucket icon, gradient fill, change the colours once again to white and grey. And again you can choose linear or radial doesn't matter. This one I've used radial. I'm going to move them around again. And you can move this up and down to suit your design preferences. We've got a line on there, so we're just going to take out that line. At the bottom of this menu here, just select no line. Then go to insert, word art, click on the black one here and move the text up. Double click. Select all, Command and Control A, and then just type in your title, select it all, go to the Home tab, select Bold, 
change the color. I'm going to choose dark blue. And then you can just change the size using increase font size, move it up. And then shape format, align, align to center. That will be perfectly aligned to the center. So once you're happy with that, you just go up to file and click save and you'll save it as a Word document. Save as will reveal a menu where you can click on the drop down and select PDF. Or alternatively, you can save it as a template, save as template, and then you can make all the adjustments you need to, but it will save the original document. Don't forget to go in and change all of your text to suit all of your dates and your information. And if you need to increase or decrease the font size to get more text in, then you can do that using this menu here. If you do want to download a copy of this, then I will leave a link in the description below. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.